Hello everybody and welcome to another round of Will It Digest. We asked what would you like to see digested and you guys delivered. Somebody suggested peanut butter and mmm mmm do I love me some peanut butter. Woo! Everything a growing boy needs. And I just happen to have some right here. Let's take a look at peanut butter. It does provide a few challenges. It's high in oil and fat, so we need to get the temperature of the digest to 210 degrees Celsius. It is sticky, which makes it difficult to get to the bottom of the liner. And we'll cover a helpful tip for that in a few minutes. First, before we go any further with peanut butter, let's take a look at some of the other foods that we need to digest. Uh, these were just brought to me and it looks like I've got, um, here, here's some beef jerky. We've got American cheese, nice and processed. We've got a little bit of, uh, we've got a lollipop and a bunch of other things in here that we will digest in triplicate. Of course triplicate because that's more work for me. But good thing is I've got a 40 position express vessel set right here. Now, as mentioned earlier, as far as the peanut butter, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. One common way is to put the peanut butter in the freezer and then we use a spatula to get it out. Or today what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a cellulose filter paper and we're gonna weigh it out, drop it into the vessel so we can make sure it gets all the way to the bottom. So I will use my non-metallic or in this case a Teflon coated spatula and with my calibrated eye, I'm gonna get about a half a gram of peanut butter. Uh, just fold it a little bit and then we're going to slide it all the way down to the bottom. So for other tricks, for other sample types, please visit our website and our in the lab section for additional information. So while you're doing that, let me get the rest of these samples ready. Great, looks like you caught me on the last sample. I'm adding 10 mils of nitric acid to our half gram of food sample. And let's go ahead and seal this up. There's position 40. And please note that we're adding all of the samples in with other blanks, spikes, and reference materials. Now it's time to head to the microwave. Okay, so now it's time to load the vessels into the Mars 6. Now that everything's loaded, we simply select our food one touch method, press start, set it, and forget it. While our samples are digesting, yeah, I went there, let's see what the World Wide Web has to say about the history of peanut butter. Peanuts were first cultivated in South America about 3,000 years ago. Both the Incas and Aztecs made a form of peanut butter that was essentially a ground up peanut paste much different from what we have today. Marcellus Edson of Montreal, Canada, <laughs> patented a more modern peanut paste from roasted peanuts in 1884. In 1895, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg of cereal fame patented the process of using raw peanuts to make peanut butter. At the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri, peanut butter was introduced to an international audience. George Washington Carver wrote the bulletin, How to Grow the Peanut and 195 Ways of Preparing It for Human Consumption back in 1916, which then boosted peanut consumption considerably. A chemist named Joseph Rosefield invented the hydrogenation process to keep the oil from separating, a real problem for shipping instability. He then licensed this process to the company that would become Peter Pan, and in 1932, Rosefield made his own peanut butter that he called Skippy. Today, Georgia and Texas are the two biggest growers of peanuts in the United States, and Americans consume around 700 million pounds of peanut butter per year. That's about three pounds a person. So, how do you like your peanut butter? Creamy or crunchy? Oh. Okay, now that the samples have cooled, I've pulled out the vessel one through four, and let's take a look at them. 
Uh, look at all that gas, all that good NOx and CO2 generated during our digestion. This is our peanut butter. Everything looks good. Okay, now it's time for our beef jerky. Uh, more good gas. Okay, that looks nice as well. And our lollipop. Just remember all that gas is being generated by the oxidizing of our organic matrix. Okay, now it's time for our cheese. Well, everything looks good. I've got quite a few left to go. Okay, I'm still in the middle of diluting all 40 samples, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of them real quick. First, this is the peanut butter. Very nice. Clear, colorless, and particle free. Now, we have our cheese sample. Again, Fantastic digest quality. Here's our lollipop. Clear, colorless, and particle free as well. And our last one, this was the beef jerky. Looks like water. So, all of these, clear, colorless, particle free, and ready for analysis. So can't we digest peanut butter and a lot of other foods? Does an acid plus a base produce a salt and water? Yes, it does. And yes, we can. All right. 